Today on Metaphysical Mississippi, we've got Krista and myself, Emily, in the hot seat. <laughs> and we've got Willow and Sarah hosting today to ask us questions. It's another installment of Ask a dot dot dot, but this time it's Metaphysical Mississippi's podcast host. So stick around. Thank y'all so much for coming on here. Um, I, of course, I'm not prepared at all. Um, other than I decided that since I've never been a podcast guest, that I would Google it. And then I watched a couple of YouTube videos on how to prepare. <laughs> oh, good. oh, good. So what did you learn? Tell us what you learned. Yeah. Now I'm curious. I just watched the tutorials for 80s makeup. <laughs> so if we have come as her true self today, which is, <laughs> oh, I'm not prepared. I was just working on my visuals. <laughs> and I just take the time, uh, you know, when I was young and free and, you know, happy. So that's the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> totally dude <laughs> I want a oh my gosh oh my gosh I was digging the blue eye shade and I was like girl that doesn't look like you but okay we're wrong right, I was wondering what was going on myself but you know to oh. hey, we all <laughs> you made me do it too but I just I said I don't have time I think no, you look good but... sexy I, I, I know you know I was going to say, I wanted to be something different than I am. So, Well, but this is sort of how you are on the inside sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, her yes. inner goddess is talking. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I didn't want y'all to feel uncomfortable. I just wanted to break the ice, too. And um, so you want to offend me by saying, why are you wearing all that blue? Actually, eyeshadow? to me. Uh-huh. Yes, you look like 80s. I, I told her I felt like we we're on the set of Desperately Seeking Susan or something. But, <laughs> but, uh, you also got the little glamour 70s rock star. I know. <laughs> He's definitely feeling that today. Um, Cinderella or Kiss or something. I know. <laughs> White snake, I don't know. I was trying to go for Tabby Faye a little, but I didn't get the hate line. <laughs> this is Dollar Tree, baby. All the way. Dollar Tree back in there. Eckerd's. Family Dollar. This is Eckerd's. The 80s. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Eckerd is a drugstore drug chain. Yeah. Yeah. Kmart. 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 <laughs> this is Kmart, baby. Okay. Anyway. All right. Okay. What y'all got for us? <laughs> well, we've got some questions here. Um, Jessica yeah. couldn't be with us tonight, but I've got some questions from Jessica as well. And so um, what I would like to start off with, if it's okay with my other co-host over here, <laughs> sure, go is ahead. I'd like for you individually to tell us about yourselves. Who are you? Who are you? What makes up Emily? Well, what makes up Krista? What, um, who are you? Well, first of sure, all, sure. I texted somebody this morning that, um, I just want to say this, that Emily and I have the easy job of coming on and being the host of these shows. I think it's harder to be interviewed. I think it's harder to be the one ask the questions than it is. Okay, so there's the question again. Who are you? So I I don't know who I am right now. It's, it's something that's been on my mind the past few days. Um, easy answer, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a sister, mm -hmm. I'm a friend. And a bitch. And a big. 
<laughs> badass bitch. Let's be clear. Let's clarify that, please. Badass bitch. Right. Badass yeah. motherfucking badass. bitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Teacher. Manager. Short order cook. Yep. Maid. Chauffeur. <laughs> Chauffeur. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Still doing that. Um. Okay, so those are all the things that you identify with on the outside of you or how society perceives you. Who are you on the inside? And on the inside, um, a seeker. Ooh, there you go. Like Just a, a, a seeker and a helper, I think. A seeker and a helper. Um, your turn. All right. <laughs> I am a Leo. I don't know any of that stuff. I don't know my astrological, whatever. See, I can't even say it, chart. But I love people. And I think the most important thing in this life is relationship. Relationship with the earth. Relationship, well, with my higher power. Relationship with my family my community, my friends, relationship with our pets. And I just think my whole gifting in my life is to walk with other people and re- and be in relationship. Ditto. I mean, yeah. I <laughs> and so I am loved and that's what I want to be. And I have been a helper and I am a helper. I've also been a doormat, but ain't no, ain't no doormat no more. <laughs> and and occasionally, occasionally. But I just feel that that um it's just important to uh connect people. And so I'm a connector. Mm -hmm. I'm a connector. So that's what I am right now. Mm -hmm. And a mother and a, you know, and a daughter and a sister. So I think our our answers are very similar. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They are. They are, Kristen. You guys are so cute. Who is older? Who's the older sister? I'm the eldest. Okay. So how how much time between the two of you? Uh, three, three, just a little over three years. And, um, from the time, even before Emily was born, um, I, she was my baby. I named her. Um, I remember. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, daddy and granny were talking about it in the car on the way to the hospital. And, and I said, which I was just barely three years old, but I was, I was talking. I was, I, I told him I wanted that, that her name, your name was Emily. Yes. And so they named you Emily. Um, and, um, and I, you know, I don't know if I really remember it. I, I feel like I remember that happening or either my parents just talked about it so much that I created the memory in my mind, but, but no, I can see being in the back seat and daddy driving and granny sitting in the front seat and they're talking about what they're going to name and name you and I I say I wanted to name you Emily after a character on As the World Turns <laughs> which was so proper that my mom and really watched all the time. <laughs> um but I didn't turn out like her no no not Emily <laughs> not that character not on As the World Turns so well so I just I- looked up the, I just looked up the name Emily online from a website called thebump.com, uh, meaning rival, laborious, or eager. Emily is a girl's name of Latin origin derived from the Roman namesake Amelia. It has several meanings, including rival, laborious, and eager. Emily is a popular choice for girls worldwide and regularly features among the top ranked names. Originally used in the 18th century, it is an enduring classic that offers numerous, um, I don't even know what this word means, Diminutives such as M or Millie. Yeah. If you want to inspire a baby to rise to life, challenges with diligence, enthusiasm, Emily is an excellent choice for your little one. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> 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 
And apparently I was named after. Uh, oh, yes. yes. There's a story behind my name, too. My name is Krista Lee, and our maiden name was Adams. So my name is Krista Lee Adams. And um, is it Lee? I, is it a middle name or is it one word? It's a middle name. Okay. Krista and, and L-E-E. -E. And I was named after Christopher Lee, the actor who was in all the vampire movies because I was so ugly when I was born. <laughs> said I look like Christopher Lee. If you go back and, and uh, Google some of those old black and white vampire movies, apparently they had to use forceps to pull me out of the birth canal and it, you know, gave me a cone head. And um, so that's, that's where. Okay. Well, I have some better news. I looked up your name yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Meaning is follower of Christ. Krista is a girl's name of Czech origin, origin, excuse me. While the title means follower of Christ, the trendy name can be suited to little girls of any faith or none at all. While other variations of this name often begin with CH, the K start gives Krista a trendy edge, similar to what the Kardashian clan rock. Whether she <laughs> follows religion, her parents, or her intuition, Krista is sure to be a new take on life to your home. Oh, okay. so so yeah, I always I liked the force of baby. Yeah, <laughs> Chrissy, I don't. I, I mean, the ugly thing. What? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Like but to go back to your question of of who who am I right right now? I'm I feel like I'm very much in a place of not really being attached to who I am right now and letting it unfold because I do feel like I'm at some turning points right now again not in not necessarily going in a new or different direction but just maybe a, a different um trying to be open to where the next step is instead of trying to have it planned out or think I know what it mm -hmm. is or where it is or how it's going to happen. I'm really trying to detach from all that and just be, you know, we say also all the time present in the moment, but literally present with what's on my plate at the very moment. I mean, I think it's important to plan ahead and have goals and, and all that, but, um, for me right now, and I don't know if this is an astrological thing or a thing in the broader community or just or just where I am on my journey at the moment, but I feel like right now it's important for me to keep keep working, but also to be um, not not attached to to what's going to happen and just let it happen and. Um, so right now, I feel like I'm a nobody right now, but I mean that in the most um, beautiful, authentic way. Yeah, that like, wow, I'm just a nobody right now. I'm not my labels. I'm not my mm -hmm. titles. I'm not my responsibilities. I'm just a nobody. Really, that's good. So, yeah. Anything else to add, Anne? <laughs> oh, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> Um, not really. <laughs> Thank I think she said enough already. <laughs> she said enough already. All right, Will, you're up, girl. What you got? Um, over the past year, so you've been doing this a year. Um, how much do you think you have grown? Um, you know, and and I know Emily, you know, kind of started from scratch here, so you know. <laughs> Um, how much do you think you've grown as a person with all these different interviews, with all these different people mm. from all these different, um, you know, lifestyles and ways mm. of life and, um, and things that are especially, you know, kind of a lot different from the way you grew up. So how do you think the last year has um, impacted your life? Take that first. All right. Doing these interviews. <laughs> yes, no, I have found that people were labeled a certain way or people's belief systems were told to me that they were wrong 
and fear was always attached mm. and getting to know everybody and and uh that that fear has diminished and I've learned the truth about people's intentions or what I see and just I'm not saying that every person that I've met that I've resonated with their belief system because I don't totally but I'm over trying to prove that the way I think is right <laughs> and the way you think is wrong because if it all and what I've learned is for the greater good do no harm love everybody if we just all stay in that mindset that is what I've learned this year that that's what we need. It doesn't matter if you are a Christian or not a Christian, because I still love and I still have some belief systems in there that will probably always be in my life because it's there, you know, it's that little bit of program. You know, I'm still well, going to want to pray and say, Jesus Christ, amen, you know, in Jesus name, you know, but um but it doesn't mean that what, how you speak to, you know, the goddess is, I'm not going to tell you how to speak to the goddess because I think we're all speaking to the same thing <laughs> in different <laughs> levels. If it's I coming agree. from love, if it's coming, I just know that um, when I... And I use the pendulum now, which is woo, scary. <laughs> but now I just, I use the word, you know, I just want the Holy Spirit to, that's, that's who I connect with. Holy Spirit and God, if it is not of you. And I know, I've learned discernment. And I think that's what's helped me. I've sharpened my spiritual discernment this year. And I know when it is of good and when it is of uh, not good, you know, <laughs> or for the be my best. Mm -hmm. So it's usually, so I think my spiritual discernment has really sharpened. Well, I think, year. I think you set an example that actually by, by exploring other belief systems or, or talking to other people who practice in different ways has actually strengthened your own personal uh, mm -hmm. walk with spirit, not, mm -hmm. not in a way of, oh, they're wrong, I'm right, as a way of, of helping you grow in your own mm -hmm. Path and oh, and with Emily, so I, she's we've probably said this before, but when she started doing the podcast, um, her intention was not necessarily to learn about metaphysics. This, you know, her and I, um, you know, we're sisters, and y'all know how sisters are. Like we're we're very close, and if anybody messes with my sister you know, it's on, but also you're going to fight with your sisters. Like you're not going to fight with anybody else. You're going to have your times of, of ebb and flow, your times mm -hmm. of being real close and your times of giving each other space. And with, with Emily and my other siblings, you know, there's, it's healthy sometimes to take a little time apart um, or just kind of not be so involved in each other's everyday life and and we'd had a little time where we weren't so involved in each other's everyday life but then we kind of reconnected mm -hmm. and I had opened holistic health and healing and was trying to decide where to take metaphysical Mississippi next and Emily was starting her own little YouTube um, videos on a, a website that that she started like 10 years ago, Granny's Front Porch. And we did a couple videos on that together and we enjoyed it. And it was about 
telling stories. It was about sharing information and telling stories. And that's what brought Emily into metaphysical yeah. Mississippi to, to offer to come alongside and help me is because she had that gifting of, she likes to research and she likes to, um, but she also likes to, to talk to people. <laughs> she like me, she likes to talk to people, but she, she likes to, to give people a way to tell her stories. Cause one thing that she does on the side that she's talked about before is, is ancestry um, um, research. She does um, yeah. fam family tree stuff. And um, so I think you've been surprised at how much you've enjoyed coming along oh, and doing yeah. this. You were just doing it just mm -hmm. to, to help me get into podcasting and you ended up um oh, are you all seeing this yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes and, and i've blogged for years just um well I, I, in, ladies. I, <laughs> yeah. I feel like that's probably great i, I was gonna say <laughs> um, because it, it all started Granny's front porch. What what we what happened on a front porch? She yelled it. <laughs> what happened on a front porch was beautiful. That's where we talked about things, and that's what we're doing. And I'm getting chills right now. Mm -hmm. um, Wait, can I just stop for a second? You're getting chills. <laughs> yeah. okay keep going I think when my hands vibrate I, if my teeth start chattering then that's when I feel my granny closest to me Beautiful. but or, or one of my ancestors but um now I'm gonna make myself do it but that's not the real <laughs> that's not, but um but that was the whole point let's talk about the the hard stuff or or the heartache or the good times or the mm -hmm. I mean I, there's, you know, with my, my heart, I have been given such, it's going to make me cry. <laughs> okay. 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 Stop. 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 I have been given so much maternal love in my life and paternal love, even though there was dysfunction paternally, we were told we were loved and my heart breaks when I think of people who weren't told that. Mm -hmm. And that's what I wanted this to be. I want people to feel loved and be part of the Granny Front Porch experience or part of the sisters sitting around a campfire or watching a sunset, whatever that looks like to you. Just being a community and feeling love. So that's what I felt. No, I'm in awe because I was just going to tell granny stories, you know, on our podcast and talk about our relatives and our sisters. And God said, why don't you do something a little where you granny out said, why don't you talk about more than me? That's true. <laughs> All right. When you said granny, I say God. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. <laughs> See, words in my mouth. Now, y'all, I'm extremely shy. Um, oh, when she no. was little, yeah, I talked, but, um, Oh, she goodness. just kind of watched. No, I would just listen. I would just listen. But that's what makes you a good podcast yeah. host is yeah. you're better at listening. Are you out of hair? I'm extremely uh, shy in, in uh, large groups. You know, do not ask me to public speak. Which yeah. is funny. You know, she can do this all day long. But, if, right. uh, you know, when I teach a Reiki class or, or even lead the meetups it was like I don't know how you do that I'm like I don't know how you do those podcasts like sometimes two or three a week I'm like I can't do that but I also got to a point where I just when I did my my podcast in the car right after the sound bath and I looked like me and I didn't care what I said I spoke from my heart and I had the ugly cry 
and no makeup on, hair wasn't fixed, run down car. I'm like, if I can do that, what do I have to be embarrassed about? I think, you know, <laughs> that I got to where I just don't give a shit. You I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that is just, I guess that's the, well, ego went out the window. And I thought it was more important to share from the heart than to worry about what I look like or that I'm fat, you know, <laughs> or that I don't articulate things, which usually this is not, I, you know, I stumble my words. I'm more of a stutterer. I can't think of my word, but um, I do believe I have divine help doing all this. Mm -hmm. Granny help, oh, help, you know, so thank you for that question. That was a very good question. I forgot what the question was. <laughs> it was a year thing. <laughs> so did I, did, did I answer Krista, the question? Did you, I think maybe you need to go back and revisit the question. Yeah. Well, yeah the, <laughs> the question was, you know, how is the last year of doing the podcast? Um, how has it um has it okay. changed you any has you know what impact has it had on your life so for me um first of all I'm so thankful that that actually em Emily handles most of the scheduling and the hosting and figuring out all the technical stuff um I just show up when I can and put the last little rubber stamp I don't even do that every time sometimes she just them and I sometimes I don't hear them until everybody else hears them <laughs> it's because I, I trust her now like I think you know we're we're we, we've got a good um she's yeah. she's she's learned what what she needs to um what will fly and what won't yeah <laughs> I need to talk just about this or not but, <laughs> but for for me it was definitely something out of my comfort zone to do something like this. Um, the podcast though has helped give me courage to do some other things that, and there's still some even other things that I think are on the horizon um, of where I'm being pushed to, to do, not pushed, um, that is, that, that is coming onto my path and I am accepting to do it, <laughs> but, um, so doing the, the podcast has given me the, the courage to take the chances on those things. And, and to also know that some of those things may not work out. Look, there's sometimes, sometimes we do these podcasts and I don't always go back and listen to them because, you know, I might say, oh, I shouldn't have said that, or, oh, I looked fat, or look at all the wrinkles, you know, I get in my head about, um, but, but really the, the real thing that makes me nervous about doing the podcast sometimes is um, I am not an expert on metaphysical things, and we are hosting a metaphysical podcast, <laughs> so a little bit of imposter syndrome might come up for me and then mm -hmm. I have to remind myself but that's why we're doing the podcast is because we are not experts and I, I know this is true for Emily especially since she was new but for me I have learned I have learned a lot of new information from our guests on the podcast um so you know, we said we were going to try it for a year and it looks like it, it stuck and it looks like we're going to keep, keep going with it. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I was going to say, it's probably easier for me to put myself out there because once you've hit bottom, there's only one way, <laughs> you know, it's just go up. Yeah. Um, I am not a trained practitioner in it. You're not necessarily but, trying to promote a service. Right, right. 
or, or I, I can't really teach anyone because I'm not an expert. But actually, I do have a lot of experience um, with my spiritual walk. And though it looks different mm -hmm. than either one of yours would, we all have our own walk, our own spiritual connection. Mm -hmm. That, um, but I'm just gonna say, I, I felt like I had less to lose, so I don't <laughs> mind. <laughs> you well, know, I love I, this concept of spiritual walk. So I kind of want to know a little bit more about each of your spiritual walks, your upbringing, where your origin and faith began. Uh, was there a strong faith in your household um, or in your community? How did that affect, um, and I know you're both moms, how did that affect your relationships, your children? How did it change over the course from, you know, when you were even um, school age to now? Like, this is, this is a big loaded question, but, and there's so many different, I think as we go through life, so many different chapters of a self, right? Yeah. So Emily, you've been talking a lot about different chapters are releasing old parts of you that no longer exist and stepping into some new yeah. spaces. So um, I'd love to hear more about your individual and collective really journeys um, in faith and in, in your connections uh, to each other and um, to metaphysical um, stuff, energy, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so you know, we both grew grew up um, in a in a strict Christian household, but it, it was uh, pretty fundamentalist, and even some of us say cultish, <laughs> cultish Christian, and um, where we were very similar to the Seventh Day Adventists or Jehovah's Witness, uh, lots of rules, lots of doctrine. Um, we were force fed the Bible. Um, and, and, and actually I don't regret or resent any of that. I still have a, a love for, for that, that word and, and something like holding a leather Bible is still, it still feels very comforting to me. Yeah. But, um, we, um, what were you going to say? Oh, I was just going to say, um, when we were little, um, my dad would wake us up. It would be like 3 a.m. on Saturday mornings because we went to church on Saturdays. And we'd have to sit around the table and have Bible study. Oh, because this is what I want to say, that even though we grew up Christian in the South, which is accepted, we were still out. Like, we grew up being outcasts or not oh, being the norm. Yeah. So that's one thing that that as... I know for me, as I began to explore more metaphysical things and it kind of got switched where, um, cause I have friends and family who think I'm crazy. I'm sure you know, <laughs> with all this, <Yeah>. but, <laughs> but that, was not, that <laughs> is not a new feeling for me because we weren't allowed. We didn't keep celebrate Christmas or Easter uh, Halloween, we didn't celebrate Halloween. So we didn't even celebrate birthdays. No, I was, I was no. traumatized as a child. Um, when, oh my God, after we'd come back from Christmas break and I'm in like junior high and everybody's going around the room saying what they got for Christmas. And then it gets to me. And then I'm like, I don't celebrate Christmas. You know, and then, you know, I was like, you don't believe in God, you're going to hell. You know, it was just, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. So, so we, we were, and, and I don't want to, we're used to that. Yes, too. and I don't want to make it's it sound, that. you know, like the violins playing in the background. No, because it was just, because there was, um, I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater there. There was, a, a, I could say there was a lot of good things that came from that experience. And, and like Emily said, um, Oh, my my parent they they were they wanted to do right at least at least I had parents who were trying and they were wanting to please God and they were wanting to raise their kids right and like Emily mm -hmm. said we I never doubted that my parents loved me I didn't always like the way yes. they handled things but but I did feel loved and I did feel protected 
my dad wasn't very, um, he was a little harder, harsh, but I felt protected by dad. I mean, yeah. like, like I never worried somebody was going to come and mess with our family. Cause I mean, my dad would, Oh get, no, you know, truthfully. <laughs> yeah. But you know, but it was so strict that. But there was a lot of mental and emotional dysfunction there, but, but, uh, that you must stay pure before marriage. Mm. And even if you were, you were taken advantage of sexually, that it's better just to ask them to kill you. Those were words that came out of his mouth than to be violated sexually. So purity, morality was all very, very important. And though I think it was skewed a little too much in the other direction, I do think that's, in some ways, it has served me because I, I do think, yeah, our, we don't want to hurt people. You know? yeah. we're, we're always trying to be nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not that we're good at it because, you know. Some well, did you find that confusing when you were little? You said you couldn't celebrate Christmas so and you couldn't celebrate birthdays. Like, was that confusing? Does it, what is it just a normal thing? Like, did oh, it feel no, okay no, no. or? you when that's all you know because and we were told we were told why okay we were told why we didn't celebrate it number one we were told that we were god's chosen people um Mm -hmm. and you know we were told halt and and you know and it's it's you know we all know the origins of christmas and halloween and easter are not what your Southern Baptist down the road says it is. So we were taught that as an early age. So even though we felt left out from, from the secular activities, I was taught that there was a a reason. So I was okay with it. And we had a church friends. We had church. We had something we called Feast of Tabernacles where we would go every, and I still miss it. Mm-hmm. but it's it'll soon be here yeah it's the time somewhere. of year um where we'd all go somewhere like the beach or the mountains and everybody from the church and all these kids our age that have been isolated we were all put together and we did fun activities and we were all normal in that you know, situation a moment. we were all normal and we all had feast gifts and we ate out and stayed in hotels I mean, we all got off all, from school New clothes. for for a you know for a week, and everybody else had to stay. And we got excused because for religious purposes, <laughs> and and we'd all like travel when we're traveling. It was a lot of fun. That the feast and the the summer camps were great. So we had community, but we were in a small town though. Sometimes we would only have one or two families that had children our age. So we had other things that brought us joy. And so actually, now that you mentioned that, like we, uh, another thing that I'm not going to throw the baby out with the bathwater with, with the experience we had with the church growing up, because not only did we get nurture and love from our extended family, because uh, my mother and father's family were not in this church. This was something they came to uh, in their early in their marriage and actually, both sides of the family were not crazy. <laughs> there was some issues with with my parents joining this church, but um, but we were modeled community in the, that church, yeah. and and so some of it was very positive. Um, but there was always a set apartness that you're set apart. And I always felt a little guilt over that too, yeah. even as a kid. I. I Yes, I felt special, but then I always felt, but I don't but understand why, why me. Why, like, why, why is my granny not going to be in the in the the, she didn't it, go to the second resurrection or whatever the resurrection when we'd all go up to you know that this is just the theology. after we die you know we'll all go up and be gods with God or whatever and we were like told you know well your granny won't because she's you know a Baptist so. Okay. Uh, so, you know, we, so I, I understand. So that always kind of bothered me. And that was actually one of the things that, that 
when I left the church uh, was over that. Of I just, I can't mm -hmm. believe that I am better than my granny. <laughs> you know, like, no. I think that's what helps us not want to tell anybody that this is the only way. Because I've seen people having peace in their life through many different ways, you know? And I mean, I don't know if the ultimate goal is peace, but I sure like peace. <laughs> I like it in my life. And, <laughs> and um, I'm not always happy, but I like peace. And I like hope. Hope to me is mm -hmm. hope and peace. Mm -hmm. And joy. We'll throw joy in there too. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that, that church, though, instilled fear in us. Fear if I do this wrong, if I do that wrong. And, of course, being mothers and wives. Oh, we won't even talk about marriage, you know. Um be, being being the helpmate, you know, serve your husband. Um, so we got it from both sides, even the Christian side as well as the whatever we were. <laughs> what were we? <laughs> I don't even know. I think, but um, but no, we always had fear, and um, the biggest fear that we had is um when armageddon happened or oh, when, when the when the when, when christ the, returned when christ returned and everybody would be at war war um god's chosen people who was us would go to petra you know somewhere off in the Where middle east that? middle east that's the place the of safety and my biggest concern, I think your biggest concern when we were teenagers is, number one, will there be maxi pads there? Oh what are we going to do at bed truck? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, and, 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 and if I we had a perm, you know, if I got a perm and then we had to go to the place of safety and it starts growing out, then I'm going to have to cut it. Oh, my God. I was like, what if Christ returned before I had sex? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that is terrible. Oh, no. Oh, my God. That is absolutely oh, terrible. But, you know, I, I can imagine how you would have been questioned. I mean, as a as a human being, um, you know, I've talked about this with me. You guys have interviewed me. We all have um, pain receptors and, like, joy receptors in our physical bodies, right? So if, if God or whoever you pray to started life somehow, were we all then just created in the most beautiful, authentic, unconditional, loved way? And why would we not want to use this physical body to feel yeah. joy and pleasure, right? So I can imagine yeah. as a teenage girl asking a lot of these questions, I imagine to yourself, maybe not to the older people in your life, because you wouldn't want to be condemned or shamed or made to feel guilty that you were asking questions that I personally would feel like would be normal mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. I remember uh, so I was always a very deep thinker and um like even listening to songs on the radio our parents were younger and um I mean I was a what, what was the term let's just say she didn't come nine months after the wedding like and I don't know if Mama graduated so oh, high school. So them shotgun when <laughs> yes. So About our here in Mississippi. And um uh, you know, so I can just remember listening to music that my parents listened to and you know, because they, they did that is one thing that didn't get taken away from us. Was oh, music. music. We still got to listen to. Oh, oh we well, to that's drink. interesting. We got to drink. drink. Drinking was okay, but like, we didn't have any desire to drink because it was, was normal. It was there, yeah. like like tell them the like on a Sunday. 
what a, a Sunday afternoon activity for us would be, would just get in the car and go riding out in the country. And daddy would buy him a six pack and then like one Coke and one candy bar for my mom and the three of us to share. But then he would let us take turns sitting on his lap, helping him drive while he drank a beer and then we could drink and then we would drink the beer too. <laughs> if you were sitting on his lap, you could... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was probably 19, maybe 20 before I got drunk. Because, you know, it. it, it well, if you had it in your system, I suppose, for a longer period of time, that first drink wouldn't hit you like a million bucks, right? So. Exactly. And, and like I said, our dad was alcoholic, so, you know, that didn't appeal to us it, at all. Like, yeah, you know, like mm. I, we yeah. wanted to be opposite. We wanted to stay in control. Yeah. And y'all went to public school? Well, we, um, oh, here's another thing about us is I counted up one time. I've moved 36 times in my life. And just for clarity, the house I'm in right now, I've lived in for almost 24 years. So wow. it was our childhood that we moved around a lot. And I've moved probably more than you. And you've moved more than me. Uh, yeah. But um, new school year almost every year. Sometimes a new school year. We had three. Well, when we were older, years. when we were little, we were in the same house for, yeah, for a while. Yeah. But, but uh, like from our junior high high school years we were moving one so why did you move a lot what what was the why, why was that happening i like to say my dad thought we were in the military but we weren't <laughs> i expected you to say that <laughs> you know that's a good question though it's, it's always it's called um i'm sorry go ahead rent is due and we ain't got no money so let's go move <laughs> That's what it's called. Or called get a new job. Oh, yeah. That, uh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't yeah. cut you off. No, no, that was good. No, there was like, uh, but you asked if we went to public school. Um, yes, but there were some years also that we were homeschooled. There were two years where we were moving around so much that um, my mom just took us out of school for a couple of years. Right. That was a fun time, though. I played in gullies and just. I don't know if I learned anything those two years. It was, I just played outside. We played outside a lot. You probably yeah. learned more in those two years than you did all yeah. those other times with that uh, education. Yeah, I had the best memories of playing outside those years. There you go. I love that. I love that. I would agree, Chrissy. That sounds really cool. That's really cool. But, but then you, after, after, we left the, after our mother passed away, you know, at age 39, when I was 18 and you were 21. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe I just turned 21, something like that. And that kind of just, we were all sort of moving away from the church, you know, leaving home. Y'all had left home. I was still at home. But the church situation just after mother passed away, it was just like, mother that doesn't sound right after mama <laughs> who passed away um i think the church also had some disbanding some some issues oh we could so tell. Um, yeah, we'll be real we'll quick. Have to do another one. i was just gonna say that um you went your way i went my way i went the way of the world went to college you know, she had the college experience. So was there any formal break with the church mm -hmm. then? Or was it just that the timing of everything kind of like create mom's death created sort of that segue to to yeah, not did. practice in that space anymore? I kind of had a, a formal break. Um, I wasn't officially excommunicated, but um, I was asked to change some behaviors that I had. And I didn't do it and uh well ba basically I started dating my husband and he wasn't in the church uh, and okay and so that was frowned upon and so I wasn't kicked out of the church for it but I was involved in a few things in the church and I was told I could no longer serve in those areas because I was dating um you know a non-believer non um 
And so I, and, and plus I had had a conversation. I remember the conversation I had with, with one of the pastors about my granny, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, it came back up in a Bible study that we are the chosen ones and, and people who aren't in the church, you know, their only, their only connection to God, the father is through us and, and, or something like that, or, or that God only hears other people's prayers if they have connection to us. I, I don't know. I, I may be getting this wrong, but, but, that, but, you know, like I said earlier, that had always been something that was a sticky point for me, but I was like, 19 years ago or almost 20 and and I just finally said no I, I told the, the pastors like this is mm -hmm. not right because my granny may be a Baptist but she is the most about as per perfect as a human being that I knew in my mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. and I just mm -hmm. I told him I, I can't accept that <laughs> mm -hmm. no mm -hmm. I know God hears her prayers I know he does I know and that was her yeah. thing and at the end of her life she kept saying I'm going to keep living as long as y'all need me to pray for you I'm going to keep living I mean that was one of the mm. things I kept living so she could pray for us uh, so I you know I, I just could not accept it and it was not long after that conversation that, that I quit going I just I quit going mm. and 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 that may have been before mama died yeah, yeah, I think you, yeah. I think I quit before Mama died. Yeah, which was when Mama died. Her and I didn't weren't on the best of terms when she passed, and part of that was because of me. Oh, but had Mom lived, I would. Probably, I think she would. Well, go ahead. I was just gonna say I probably would have went to the church college and got married that was my goal is to marry a pastor in our church um, that, yeah I mean that's, uh, be a minister wow. yeah that's you know the because, ultimate goal though now I know that that would not have happened because we weren't we didn't have enough money for that <laughs> I mean because we were poor we weren't you know yeah yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> so much for unconditional love <laughs> okay this is what i love about these podcasts this was not even all all this was not even on my mind today to talk about but that's what i love it just you know what really cool because like you know you guys have said before every single one of us has a story and every single person's story um is can be a gift to another human being about the lessons you've learned where you've come from, the challenges that you faced, how you overcame, when you just, you know, you were talking about dating your husband, Chris, you had a feeling about him, right? And you went with it. Like, we all have these emotional things that happen to us in the course of our life, in the course of these chapters in our lives. And so we're always continuing to evolve. And if we can help, right, another person by sharing our story, what a gift that is, um, and also the healing that comes with that because you're literally expressing emotionally and you're releasing some of those emotions um, in your physical body to talk about it. And it doesn't, then it doesn't have that, like the fear isn't so tight in the physical body because you've let it go. So I commend you for sharing all that with us. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I don't, you know, I also want to be careful about bashing my, my previous religious you know what I, I, I appreciate it I, I do well I, I don't think either one of you have done my my impression is that neither one of you have done that you've literally just shared your story and your experiences of your upbringing which right. um th there is no the bad I mean we live in America everybody has the right to freedom of speech everybody has the right to religious freedom so um that's just part of your story mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> I said that emotion. Yeah, I didn't feel. I didn't feel at any time that you were bashing Christianity or your your religion in any way. Like um, Sarah said, you were just telling your story, and that's your um, opinion of it, or the way you felt when it happened, mm -hmm. or that's the way mm -hmm. you perceived it as it was mm -hmm. happening. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I didn't. 
I don't ever. Somebody I don't, who's I've less evolved might take anything. it the wrong way. Right. Yeah. Right. Somebody who's less evolved might not be so understanding uh, or open. Yeah. Right. And and I think the biggest takeaway for for me and Emily both is been that um, that's why we're we're very uh, I'll use the word sensitive or or conscientious to not telling people what the truth is or not telling people you should do this, you should do that. Oh, don't believe this, but you must believe that. Uh, because I grew up in it. Yes, I have my personal beliefs, but um, that it was forced on me and I don't ever want to force that on anybody. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time, I have a little bit of honor and respect for that experience. Like yeah. I, I a lot and, and actually <laughs> we learned a lot of metaphysical things in that church now they would not call it that but Ooh, uh, let's talk about that tell us you about know, that the bible is full of 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 metaphysics okay so one thing that we did and i know a lot, a lot of other christian faiths and well all, a lot of faith different religions do this is uh the laying on of hands and the anointing with oil, and the, mm -hmm. um, you know, as a child, I never thought, oh, I'm going to do that, but uh, that's probably one reason why I so resonate with Reiki, is because mm -hmm. that was modeled, and, and, you know, I do think we witnessed some miracles here and there. Um, oh, what are, I'm trying to think of, well, the, I don't remember. There, there was the time a, a demon was cast out in our house. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if we'll share that too much because I don't remember all the details, but, but we we also practice exorcisms. We did. Oh, okay. I mean, <laughs> the church did that you grew up in. Yeah. The church did. So um, they didn't call it an exorcism. It, it, it was called casting out yeah. demons. Though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, thing, right? Language is important. Was, oh, oh. It was, a, was a Catholic word, so we didn't. Oh, oh wait, wait, wait. I'm, a, I'm a recovering Catholic. Tell me what the word was. Oh, <laughs> it's, you know, y'all have priests that that do exorcisms. I mean, that's part of the, the word. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Oh, they do. Oh, and a cross. Oh no, that 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 is a bad. We could not have any symbols of oh. of religion was it all oh mm -hmm. my goodness okay. that, that's no relics as we call them in the right that oh, that oh, yeah. poems and paganism yeah. and runes yeah. yeah what we couldn't say we had to call certain certain lord remember we couldn't say eternal or we couldn't say christ or something we had to say the word lord no it was the other way around we didn't okay. say lord okay maybe that's it <laughs> Or, uh, I wasn't paying attention. Now, now, and here's the thing: the rules change a lot in the show. Uh, I mean, uh, one week we could wear makeup, the next week we couldn't. But we couldn't eat pork. Oh, we couldn't eat uh, seafood. And y'all, growing up, I didn't know what really seafood was because I had never really had it. Oh. So I remember when I was like in sixth grade, and it was Friday. You know, and oh, and we live in South Louisiana, <laughs> and I Let me. and I pointed at something, and I asked if it was shrimp, and they laughed at me because it was catfish. Oh, <laughs> see, I was raised in Louisiana. I would have starved to death if I didn't if I didn't eat new seafood. That's that's the only thing we did eat. <laughs> yeah. that's so funny. But, but yeah, it it it's um. But, um, well, I think there's something to be said, too, about every, you know, it's like a lot of folks in our community uh, have had some kind of religious upbringing or experience. And for many of us, it seems to be a thematic that we did, we knew we didn't quite fit into whatever family structure we were kind of dropped into. Like, I kind of see, remember the, the claw from um, Toy Story? The claw, yeah. the claw, right? So I kind of feel like many of us were like picked up from like maybe a brood of misfits. And I know we're supposed to have picked our parents. Maybe we did, maybe we didn't, I don't know. And then we just were picked up and then we were just, oh, this family needs a soul. Plop. <laughs> Black sheep right here. <laughs> right. Todd yeah, had yeah. one right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
an interesting um, concept for a lot of us. And in we just knew something didn't quite fit or didn't resonate the right way, right? And so um, maybe that's a great question. Chris, do you have, an, you have another question over there, Willow? Um, I do have one more question. Now, I mean, I know the answer to this, but I mean, uh, I'm just going to ask y'all. So like you've interviewed so many people over the past year. Ooh. Who is your favorite guest? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> <Nice guess. laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> now I wouldn't ask you to pick that, but like maybe a memorable <laughs> moment, a like, question. you know, yeah, what's like question. a moment that really stands out? Oh, wow. You know, I really, one of my favorite interviews was with the Charlotte Bass. I knew you were going to say that. I, we hadn't even... And um, she was talking about uh, basically kind of what we're talking about realizing when you grow up in a household, you don't think the same way yeah. that um, everybody else does. And she talked about how she viewed the world from up high, you know, like, like God, mm. a lot see things from up high. I, I say the conversation with her was the most touching and heartwarming for me. Well, Cause it really came to you. At a time and, when you needed it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And and she was there with, with just the right words and, oh, and energetic. Um, yeah. 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 I was just thinking about her driving here. Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, so for me, if you're asking which one changed my life, mm. the most or opened your eyes up to something new or a good, it's, it's such a great question. It's still loaded question. Maybe not favorite, but like, what did maybe favorite, but like, what did you learn? Was there an aha moment you had? Was there like a connection that was made or was there really a space where you're like, no, that really doesn't fit with me. I, I've had the funnest time with you guys, baby. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I will say this, Emily gets all tickled when it's time to do the witches, uh, you know, because that is so far from like two years ago, would you ever thought you'd be talking to witches? <laughs> she gets tickled about that. And, and Sarah, I'm just going to put a plug in. Um, the, this last one with, with you and Jessica, well, I'm just, Jessica was just, and see, I wasn't in that. So, okay, that'll be the one I pick because it's the one freshest on my mind. Um, Jessica's part, I just, it, it warmed my heart because we were in psychic development class together mm -hmm. three years ago. We did Reiki training together. And, and to hear her interview with Emily, um, she just has grown so much and, and so I'm going to pick that one because to me, it's a reflection of how far we've all come. All yeah. of us oh, that's beautiful. You know, has, we, we've grown and we've, uh, learned new things and we've fallen and we've made mistakes and we've had to pick ourselves back, ourselves back up. Um, some of us have even um, had our own little issues with each other because, my God, we're human. And just like I said earlier, mm -hmm. you know, Emily's my biological sister, so uh, we fight sometimes. Well, there's a lot of people in this community that I'm close to, just like a sister. So I'm not going to say we fight, but we don't always see eye to eye. Or we may have disagreements, but to see how we've all uh, come back together and, and we we don't let um, the, when we get little sidetracks here or there we don't let that keep us from from moving forward and, and still doing the work and then I also have to say one of my other favorite ones was uh, uh, 
the one I did with Gina recently about our new Reiki teaching. So, cause I'm really excited about that. So. Well, that's cool. <laughs> but, uh, but gosh, I learned something from almost every one of them. Oh, I know. It's like <laughs> free therapy for me. I, <laughs> I, I love that you say that. I really do. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to look up as we're talking. I know Jessica. Oh, there she is. She sent me a couple of questions to ask you guys, but I love that you say that because I think, Again, when everybody's able to tell their story, we also as humans, even though we work really hard, I would say, and a lot of folks in our community are awake enough to work really hard to not place judgment. You can't help but self-assess, right? You can't help but like think, okay, well, that's their belief system. How does that resonate or not resonate in my physical body? Does that make my heart swell? Does that feel good? Does that answer questions that I had, right? So we can have these spaces where we're constantly sort of in a mental capacity checking, but then also there's like this really beautiful healing naturally that comes with that. Because I know for me, it's always been about, well, gosh, I really am not that alone. Like I, it's not weird that other people feel and see souls that have crossed over. It's not weird that people see random colors around somebody's physical body or get hit with a big emotion when they meet somebody for the first time. I mean, that stuff for me, when I was feeling not a part of anything, that was scary, right? So like, I never felt fully accepted uh, until I, and we talked about this before, until I moved to Mississippi and I have met this beautiful community. So it is healing every time I can imagine because you're expanding and you're growing, but you're self-assessing, which is the beautiful part about evolution to be able to move forward, to not be stuck anymore, right? To get past that upbringing of crazy religion for some of us. Yeah. And we're in recovery, but we're actively moving in a different direction to find different belief systems or even continuously wanting to be open to learning something new. What a beautiful gift that is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, another thing I've, I've learned, uh, well, just in, in all the areas of my life where I am, but, but with the podcast too, is not to take things personally. I mean, it's so easy to look at life through our own eyes and think that everything that someone says or does that may not be for our best interest or be resonant with us. It, it ain't all, it ain't about me, you know, right. <laughs> like, exactly. Like, and I'm not saying that I have mastered that ability. It's, it's the daily um, walk with that, but but it's something that's high in my awareness is I, to to not take things personally. And it's because it's in my awareness is because I do take things personally. So that's why it's like, no, don't just just don't don't take it personally. But what a beautiful lesson that is for you to just acknowledge that alone. That's yeah. an evolution in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Bravo. So y'all can teach. <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to throw in, I'm going to throw in the question. Um, so Jessica's got two questions and I think that maybe they kind of move together. First is how did you come to be aware of your gifts? And second, tell the story of how you decided to start your businesses and this podcast, how did it all come together? We kind of actually finished maybe this answer, the second one, but mm -hmm. let's talk about your gifting. So, um, like we've already said, I, I've always felt different. Uh, I've always, not that I've always followed it or acknowledged it, but, but, um, you know, sometimes I would just know stuff and that's something that, that Jessica talked about and it so resonated with me. I would just know how things were going to turn out I would just no not that didn't always that's not always the case so I I undoubt you know I'm still human and my discernment's not always there but um when did I oh my gosh I'm, I'm drawing a blank as to <laughs> okay this is what's coming to my mind okay no well, let me go back let me go back Oh, yeah, I just I now I know when I first started question it was after my mom died uh, the death of my mom and I was either I think I had already quit the church I think 
but I, I think I shared that when she passed, her and I had had a little hiccup in our relationship. She wasn't happy with me dating, who's now my husband. Um, he's, he and has been for how many years? 20 years. Yeah, uh, thir almost 30, 29, 29. There you go. Okay, um, sorry, keep going. <laughs> yeah. and, uh, but, but it's because he was 10 years older than me and he uh, was uh, not in our church definitely not in our church and 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 just other things so so we were I mean we were still communicating but there was definitely a rift in our relationship and then she got ill she died of uh, amyloidosis and had uh renal what, renal cancer. failure and yeah. um tumors brain tumor let's just yeah by the time oh because here's another side note we didn't believe in going to the doctor <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. I did go to the doctor occasionally, but but you know, let's pray about it. Yeah, and and we and and you know, and, and I believe in that too. Like I believe in both. You know, uh, we were very much into to faith healing and um and you know herbs and so herbs and all that was okay. Like that was that was good. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, we we had kind of resolved things a little bit when she was in the hospital before she got so bad where you know while she was still coherent her and I did have some conversations and you know we're kind of okay but but still there was that rift and um so when she passed I, I had a lot of guilt and and I felt a lot of guilt because I was not her primary caretaker it was Emily Emily was still at home and I would visit her in the hospital, but I, I think dad wanted me to move back home and I refused to because I didn't want to be under his control. I did, I had worked, fought so hard to get away. I didn't want to go back. And so once she died, I had the survivor's guilt. Uh, I felt guilt that Emily got mm -hmm. stuck with being her caregiver. Um, and I remember one night just driving all over Rankin County, just crying all night, just like, just so grief stricken. And, um, but, but, but then I felt comfort. I mean, I, I felt like she was listening to me. So that, that made me have to like rethink because, you know, we did not believe in mediumship stuff in our church. Um, if, if you experienced a medium mystic event, that was a demon. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. wow. Yep. So, so, um, but I knew I, I felt comfort driving on that road. And then at some point, I don't remember how long ago it was after that, I had a dream and it was one mm. of those significant dreams. It was a dream that wasn't a dream. Yes. And she was in the dream. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I'm about to cry. The dream took place in a Burger King that is just right on the other side of these trees from where Emily lives. And it was a Burger King that I would eat at sometimes. And in the dream, she was there and she had her nightgown on and we talked. I mean, she was dead and in the dream. It was her, but she's dead. And we talked and she told me everything's okay. Don't feel guilty anymore. Like, like she said, I'm fine. And you're fine. She's like, our relationship is fine. Mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. You know, and I've shared that dream with you many yeah. times. And so that was probably one of the first things to make me go, hmm. I mean, I'd already left the church, but that was a tangible event for me personally that opened the door. Now, it was still years, probably 20 years later before I really jumped in to doing metaphysical things. But that was real to me. That was real. And it may have been my subconscious, my higher self. It may have been God. I didn't care what it was. It may have been mama. I didn't care what it was. All I knew is I felt better the next morning. And, and it that dream helped me begin to heal my relationship 
with with my mother and helped me to to grieve in a more positive way her loss and um so but but then you know I went to, I was in college got married started having kids and when you're in that phase you know you're just going through the motions of life and I was going to the Methodist church and the Baptist church, wherever my kids were going to preschool, you know, I was just playing the, 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 the mommy life. Um, then about 10 years ago, and this is going to sound so silly, but I was watching a CSI episode. Um, one of the original, the one in Las Vegas. And, uh, I didn't really even watch that show very often, but, but, um, it was on and, the episode was a was about oh somebody had been murdered but um they were talking about reptilian aliens and I'd never heard of that before and it just got my attention so I googled it and I was like oh my gosh this is like a real like people really talk about this this is like and so I started somehow came across coast to coast am which is that radio show uh, that's been around for years started by art bell and i think george george nori now does most of them and so i started listening to that and i don't know if y'all are familiar with coast to coast am but it, it was a talk show radio show you know this was before podcasts were popular or just beginning to to be a thing and um I started listening to that and just got exposed to all these different things, you know, the ancient alien stuff and uh, past life regression and ghosts and and mediumship and um, of course UFOs and, and, and it's just like, oh my gosh, there's people out there that really do like entertain this. This isn't just mm. made up. Hollywood or demonic either you know like like it it and so that's kind of where I started really down officially accepting the more metaphysical things was I, I gotta say coast to coast AM radio that's and I don't so cool what a people, nugget you know uh so um and then it led to um and one summer I took yoga classes with Debbie Lewis at her old studio and um, treated myself for a summer doing that and then started receiving Reiki sessions from a, a dear sweet lady who no longer lives here in Mississippi but um, for health issues and and then here I am <laughs> so anyway I forget, was that, that answered the question <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a great question um, or a great answer. How about you and what kind of, um, you know, it's funny. I think the first time I met you, you were on the podcast interviewing Jessica and, or no, it was just, we were interviewing me and you were like, well, I don't really believe in all this stuff. And I was like, oh, wait, girl, you just hold on. <laughs> uh, you're about to step in on a wild ride and this journey is going to blow the socks off of you. And I and, knew that, I mean, I just psychically, I just, you were, that was my, like the hit that yeah. I just got uh, for you. And it was really, really intense. And I think, um, it, you know, having your experience with granny, like what a beautiful gift that is and was and continues to be, right? Your connection with her soul and, um, you know, and then obviously your love and respect for Krista, even though you might not have completely understood or believed or even, you know, thought maybe she was a little out there, um, you know, and I, and I know that <laughs> <laughs> I see that look. Cool. I just comment on your evolution in this, even just a short period of time from coming in and saying, well, I don't know if I really believe in all this stuff to, wow, now I'm so appreciative and I don't believe in everything, but at least I have a better understanding of where people are coming from. That alone to me is a huge sign of emotional, spiritual, physical growth um, mm -hmm. that I, I would wish as a fellow human being that other human beings also have those sort of evolutions of those turns in their, in their life. So um, I, I, I want to hear you talk a little bit more about that journey. Well, 
Okay, I'm going to I'm going to answer with something that I'd always answer with when we were at the Bible study table at um when, when I was like 3 or grade school and my dad dad would ask us a question, a biblical question, and I could say this and I'd always get it right. God. <laughs> the whole time you were saying I was like God. I mean, the God or source, I, I think um, I've always had a relationship with something. It's the creator, the creator. That's who my, you know, is, is my God, the creator. The, the, uh, I am used to calling it a he because that's just always, I really don't care if it's a he or a she. It's mm -hmm. that one that I co-create with. Mm. So I resonate at, with the creator, the manifester, the, you know, the one who gives the giver of life. Um, so I've always had a connection, deep connection with creator and, uh, every time it's like when I got stuck, I got pulled into a fundamentalist. The creator was always there. And I learned something, but I'll always go back to it. And he's always like, I'm still here. I'm still here. You know, did you learn that? Isn't that neat? Like right now, yoga is my thing. I mean, I really do not care about the history of yoga. Or what everything's called. Maybe not right now. Well, maybe not. <laughs> spoken like a true <laughs> sister. <laughs> but the breath, that's what I care about. The breathing and the movement. Mm. And for me, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like, how, how can this be labeled of as something? Not of God. <laughs> not of, you know what I mean? How can this, when yep. it's just asking us to connect with a higher source, but then ground yourself? So I, I think, um, yeah, so I'm involving in that and learning to, you know, the, the I'm learning the, the grounding and I don't know all the chakra stuff. Or whatever, but um, the connecting with God and allowing Him to uh, the connecting with Source, Creator, and allowing um, art co-creating with Him. Yeah, and you're beautiful. Like, you, you don't have to know, yeah, the history or the details of, of yeah. stuff. Because I'm not I'm not gonna learn it because I don't want to. Because you're already doing it. You're you're doing yeah. it, whether you yeah. know it or not. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nothing wrong with with learning it. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't resonate with me. That's my favorite that's, word. That's okay. That's <laughs> okay. Or does it resonate? Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm gonna say goodbye to you guys right now because I'm gonna go. But it was lovely seeing everybody. Thank you for Thank letting you. me be a part of your yeah. uh, ask the host. <laughs> yeah, and, and I, this and was I, super fun. A little bit more, Christy. I mean, you can go too if you want to, or if you want to stay a few more minutes. Because I have thank you so much for coming on, Philo. Whatever, man. You guys are awesome. Like, I mean, you you know your your podcast are so beneficial for us as well. Like. Kelly and I, I mean, not to speak for her, but to speak for her, uh, I mean, we love y'all and y'all that what you're doing, I mean, it, you know, it, it's fulfillment for us as well. Cause we get to talk about who we are and we get to be yeah. our, our, our 
authentic selves and you're curious about that and you we we end up having a deeper relationship through it and not it's no it's never confrontational or you never make y'all never make anybody ever feel like they're less than anything um and it's just I uh, you y'all I mean y'all have a special place in my heart I I'm so oh. grateful for what y'all do and I know a lot of other people are and you know like Sarah was saying like we we learn like you know from each other you know every time we do a podcast like I've learned something about myself or something about you guys or something about the universe that I didn't know you know and uh, I watch I watch you know, all of y'all's podcasts that y'all have done because, you know, I, I feel honored to have been one of your guests and I want to support y'all because, I mean, I really think it's important what you're doing. And, and especially since, you know, COVID, a lot of people don't get out anymore. And so not everybody's going to come to the metaphysical meeting or not everybody's going to feel comfortable uh, around other people. So this is a platform that you can come on to learn and then it may take you somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I love you guys and I think it's fucking awesome what y'all do and I hope you keep on doing it. <laughs> I think we are. And Christy, I could I don't even know how many subscribers we have. I don't even look at how many people view stuff. We do them and then we just put them out there. Because it it's for the, the views and the listeners. Yes. It's mainly for the guests. <laughs> we want to give people uh a, a place to talk and, and, and you get to know people I mean I have, yeah. I, have uh, I mean I've got like 50 friends <laughs> and I don't even know if I've met some of them in person right <laughs> uh, I mean and you learn so much I, but it's like when I teach a class like when I teach a class, I really learn it. I really absorb it. I really feel it. I have to study for it. And y'all do that, you know? And I know we know Emily does that. <laughs> well, we had years of experience having these conversations with mm -hmm. the three sisters. I mean, we, we, we talk deep like this. We've always talked deep like this. Deep. And oh. it's, you know, yeah. And with our, let's take this show on the road, you know, with our <laughs> other siblings too. And, and like Emily said, our, our relatives would sit on that front porch and, and sometimes the conversations were, were simple. And then sometimes they were deep, like, like, right. I, I don't, yes, I, I enjoy small talk. You know, I can talk about that wooden fence out there to somebody for five minutes. I have no trouble talking, but and I don't mind small talk, but you want to talk about deep shit. Go sit on yeah. the front porch. <laughs> the question is from Christy Pyron. Um, and one is, if you could interview anyone from the metaphysical world, alive or past, uh, who would it be and why? And what would your most burning question be? <laughs> okay, oh. so Andrew Casey. As a dead person, um, but a lot, you know, I would love to talk to, I'm going to go back to coast to coast AM. Some of those people that I first, that I don't really follow that much anymore, but if I could, could have George Norrie or, uh, well, Art Bell's passed away, but some of those original coast to coast people on one day that that would be really cool but some of the podcasts that i listen to that the digest find interesting that i would love to have on one day would uh, be like graham hancock um i don't know if y'all are familiar with him but he does a lot of the ancient civilization stuff uh there's another podcast called earth ancients uh oh, i, I love it cliff dunning Yes, 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 I would love to have, because he used to do conscious expos, and, and, and he also is an advocate for, um, well, we'll just be honest, for, for cannabis use, you know, yeah. for health reasons, and, 
and he, he's just like he's a Reiki practitioner. He mm -hmm. take he does um trips to the and pyramid. actually I have I, 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 I personally have an interest in ancient civilizations and mm -hmm. and questioning what our true history might really be. So what would be a question you would ask? <laughs> well, if, if he were on our podcast, of course, I would want to make it relatable to people in Mississippi. So one thing, um, I, I do have an interest in uh, Native American history and the uh, Indian mounds and all that. And that's something we didn't even share about our past um, where we grew up on a Native American site. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, and, and we have Native American ancestry, so so I have an in, I have a personal interest in that. But I, I I would like to ask him: Has he done any research, or archaeologically with with the Southeast United States? And and well, okay, the the Mayan civilization. I mean. Yeah. That's really, and, and you know, there's there's been some, um, there's a camp out there that that do feel like that the ancestors of the Southeastern Native Americans were also the, the Mayan, I mean, that they were all connected, and so I find all that very interesting. But, Emily? <laughs> um, mine is, well, mine is Enoch from the Bible. I don't know all the little stories that were written about him. I don't know all the little extra. Because he's in other parts um, of the yeah, Bible. Bible that weren't put in the Bible. Yeah, I don't know that. But um, he's in Genesis as being a person that ascended and didn't die. So I can't say he's dead because <laughs> he's ascended. And my question would be, what was it like to walk with God? And how do you do that? I mean, how, what, what was a typical daily walk that you had? So I, I just think that relationship was probably heavenly. <laughs> and so is he not? So that's it. You know who else I'd love to interview? And and I would have to have Sherry Crook be with me on this. <laughs> and she's passed away. Uh, but uh, Dolores Cannon, she was also, are, are y'all familiar with her? Um, she I've, she I've did. Heard her her. Uh, she's a hypnotherapist, but, but she um, she's written many books. And I don't even think she considers herself necessarily a psychic or medium. This was all information that she gleaned from sessions that she did from people with with hypnotherapy i know sherry's done a different training than dolores cannon but but we both find her her work very interesting um so that that's another dream um interview i'd love to have but she's no longer with us <laughs> all right um okay so another question was what metaphysical subject would you like to know more about that you haven't talked about on your podcast? And I think I kind of hinted at that already. I I would like to have some guests on who who know more about ancient civilizations and in particular the the southeast United States where we live. Uh, there's so much history I know that we we don't know I, I think mainstream academia views high civilization one of the tenets of being a highly civilized society is that you have written language well for me personally I, I don't like that <laughs> I, I mean that's you know I feel like there's been many intelligent and highly um, aware, evolved, sentient beings who may not have had a written language that we have access to now, or even if they did, if they wrote on 
biodegradable materials, we don't have it to, to talk you know. more about. Those those are things that interest me. You know, the the sacred sites. I I'll, I I'll, I'll love sacred sites all over the world, but but since we're in Mississippi, I'd love to take a deep dive into places that are sacred here in the Southeast United States. And and I know we have some experts. I just I just need to reach out. To them. I know we know people that either are just very interested in it or actually have a lot to share. Uh, for me, um, I'm kind of interested in sacred geometry. I don't know very much about it, but I also with the creative part of me, I would I would like to, which I'm hoping to have, I have someone in mind who are asked that we're going to talk about sacred geometry, but then how you um, that flows out through art, you know, and um, three dimensional, two dimensional, you know, and using sacred geometry and being creative with that. So that's an area that I'm interested in. And and I I love philosophy. I love. Um, I'd like to take a dig dive with some of the world religions, the current and from the past mythology. I mean, all, those are all things I find interesting, but I'm not well versed in them. Like I haven't read a lot about them, but, but I think they're interesting. And so I know we have other people in our community that find it interesting too. And if they want to come, they don't have, they don't have to be an expert. If anybody wants to just come talk to us about it, they don't have to be an expert. We can just talk about it. You know, I, what I think is interesting is, well, it's because it's what I was raised in and, the, you know, the the Bible and I've read it for myself and it's a divine book for me, not to find fault in other people, but it's a relationship book for me. But it would be interesting to find, uh, talk to other people who have, you know, had different divine books that have guided them in their life that's different than the one that I use but then also to see how the similarities are you know mm -hmm. that who was the writer of this you know <laughs> is it all the same source that's been fed through mm -hmm. you know humans Anyway, yeah, I think it, I think the the yellow pages could be a, a divine book. If you yeah. <laughs> Brrr, all right, number four. That means I'm stable. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Moving on. Ooh, numerology. That would be fun. Yeah. Um, Regina and I were naming our our Reiki practice, our Reiki teaching practice. Uh, I took a little deep dive into numerology just just for a little bit. Just Google it. I mean, I wasn't. Um, so, so yeah, like, all, there's a lot of stuff we haven't, we've barely scratched the surface, I think, on the topics we could talk about here. And I think all of those topics sound great, and I can't wait to, to, uh, see how, who y'all bring in next, and mm -hmm. what, what podcast y'all come up with, and, uh, the questions you ask, and, oh, I can't wait. That all sounds great. Ancient civilizations, and, numerology and um man and I know some people too so I might throw some people y'all's way and you know you don't, I don't really think anybody's an expert you know I mean it's all a mystery and we're all learning and no matter what field or what direction um or what you start you know what path you choose to start learning on I don't I think you just it's a continuous you know learning process you know and I know there's experts in certain things but you know watch out for those experts I, I, would, prefer <laughs> it, uh, I would prefer you not be <laughs> right 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 <laughs> Right. So, but anyway, well, thank you, Christy. Yeah, you, thank you made a wonderful day. Thank you. <laughs> thank y'all. I'm glad my phone was reminded me, and I was like, oh my God, I got to get my computer. But you guys are great. Like I said before, y'all are so awesome. And, and I think we all learn so much, and, and you're so. Uh, your hearts are so big and you, we really just feel the love from y'all. Um, 
and you know definitely um we'll continue to watch y'all and hey whenever you need me again i'm here man <laughs> they have an herb talk podcast for too i mean you yes. can you do it a little bit when you come on with the witches but um yes maybe next time you're gonna do a herb class we can oh we yes we definitely that. do that right on yeah i would love to i talk about herbs all day <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. Well, thanks for having me. Thank yeah. you. Bye, y'all. <laughs> the views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the program does not imply an endorsement of them or any entity they represent. <laughs> <laughs>